So then to say that those who are uh, afflicted with, let's say, suffering or uncertainty, uh, are they actually blessed with those conditions because those provide the means for spiritual growth and realization? Can be. Yeah. Yeah. I used to say, very often, quite out of instinct, by right, intuition, no hardship, no genius. No fire, no realization. Just words. So you have to welcome what it is, your difficulties, and, you know, uh, your trials. You have to welcome those steps along the path. And that is an end in itself. It's not suffering to be suffering. It's suffering to be working and transforming into something of great service to other peeps. So we have to understand we have to get beyond our blood. Right? You were born to experience limitation and bondage. Born into bondage to be bonded, see what's all this, and then to awaken beyond that, to recognize that the, this, the, the beginning, the, the starting with the few beings is, is key, key stepping stone to all beings. And how do you, how do you realize that? You have to get to the all beings, to be the truly creative brother to all beings, and then we ultimately create it when we're taking care of all beings, in a matter of speaking. So when we hear these, the adepts, the Mahasiddhas and these uh, geniuses talking about all beings, they're not talking nonsense. They're talking about the bigger intelligence that is the divine itself, but not as any one person in particular, but all beings. That's huge. And not all beings on this planet, but all beings on all planets in all worlds, in all realities, that's bigger than, you know, stealing from your neighbor or beating up on your neighbor. We're talking about something really huge, immense, in, in scope and in imagination. Imagine that, all beings. And that is where the heart is. The heart is with all beings. So this is now the genius of all beings. The genius, uh, the heart is the genius of all beings at the heart level. All the aliens and everything else you can imagine is all beings, living beings and not living beings, all beings, all being beyond being. See, all of that is part of the same, same presence. And we are that, and we, we can draw from that, but we, we stay looking in the mirror of our monkeyness, monkeydom. See, we're dumb monkeys, so to speak, not to put anything on our, our, our relatives, monkeys, our earth, earth friends, monkeys. Uh, but yeah, we, we just settle for that. When we have heart awareness, we have intelligence, cosmic consciousness, we have the divine unconscious and that which leads to the superconscious. See, that can really make a big difference out here. If we start to realize ourselves as part of the equation of the higher and the lower, not just the lower, but the higher. What is that higher? How much higher is it? Is it the higher, higher? Is it the utmost high. What is it? What is our perception? What is our limit? What is our, you know, relationship to the divine in that sense? The reality. And we're really talking about reality as it is completely, total. And we say as it is because we, we, we start to sense what it isn't. But we, we're being what it is and we say that's not enough. The heart needs more. The intelligence needs more. The mind needs more. The soul needs more, and the spirit needs more because there are sources in the infinite. And that says a lot more than some of the things we read in the books that are available out there. So when you talk about all beings in that sense, you're talking about such a vast inclusiveness. I mean, it, it, uh, it just takes a tremendous opening to even, you know, contemplate. You have to have a big imagination. See? But then, then when you, you are able to imagine, you see, that's it's common sense. See, from that level, it's common sense. We're talking about cosmic common sense, or what I have called native, radical native common sense. Radical common sense. It seems in a way beyond conventional human to, to think of the, the vastness of such inclusiveness. Yeah, but then it's not a thinking. So you have to get beyond that. So you're saying thinking, you know, you start for one second, you think it, but then you have to know it. It's not a thought, it's such. Thought disappears instantly into what? A knowingness of it, a feeling then into knowingness. That's the process. Transformational process is instantaneous. It's not like, oh, I'm going to transform, I'm going to take 50 years of my life to transform this little particle into this particle. 
Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. Mm. And and so did the uh, let's say spiritually enlightened live from a, a view of all inclusiveness and and the openness. They, they may they may have to. That might be coincident with their state or condition of liberation. If it is indeed a fact for them, then it has to be a hard fact relative to the universe. And it has to be a hard fact relative to intelligence. And if these, these aspects of their nature are liberated, then it has to be a hard fact relative to creative, uh, let's say, uh, creative let's say, uh, awareness. Yeah. Infinite creative awareness. And if it's that, then it has to be also uh, related to silence. Pure silent being, infinite creative awareness, pure silent being. There seems to be uh, some of the human in there, but some of beyond the human. Well, we are, we are the beyond the human, and I think that's the point that I'm trying to make and raise to uh, the people. Say, we, yeah, we're being dogs, it's good. It's good to be a dog, but is that all? It's good to be a man, great, but is that all? See, so we have a mix of earth, uh, beast, animal, right? Lower kingdoms, beautiful, sacred, no doubt, and, and things built upon that. See, evolved from that. And we're talking about the human, uh, the basic human, the unevolved human, the evolved human, and the super evolved human yeah, as part of this process, and then transcendent human beyond that. The divine human, we're all that, but what, what are we willing to be and what are we willing to sacrifice in order to be it and, and be the reality of that? Yeah. Good question.